Hello everyone, welcome to Next Generation Sustainable Living. This is a Stirling engine. Stirling engines can run off of just about any heat source, while this particular model is being powered by the sun. The reflective dish we have here is simply acting as a solar concentrator. The sunlight that hits the dish is reflected and concentrated onto the Stirling engine. And once the engine heats up, all you have to do is give the flywheel a light push and watch it take off. Engines have been powering our world since the Industrial Revolution. First, dirty coal-powered steam engines, then cleaner and more efficient gasoline engines, and more recently, jet engines and airplanes. The basic concept of an engine, something that exploits the difference between a high temperature and a low one, hasn't changed in a couple of hundred years, although occasionally, people do still come up with minor improvements that make the process slightly faster or more efficient. One engine you may have heard a lot about recently is the Stirling engine, which is a bit like a steam engine that uses no steam. Instead, it heats, cools, and recycles the same air or gas over and over again to produce useful power that can drive a machine. Teamed up with solar power and other new technologies, Stirling engines sound like cutting-edge technology, but they've actually been around since 1816. Some people say Stirling engines are simple. If that's true, it's true in the same way that great equations of physics like E equals M times C squared, are simple. They're simple on the surface, but richer, more complex, and potentially very confusing until you really figure them out. Heating and expansion. The gas starts off on the left in the hot end of the cylinder. It's heated by the fire or other heat source, so its pressure rises as it expands absorbing energy. As the gas expands, it pushes the work piston to the right, which drives the flywheel and whatever the, energy, and whatever the engine is powering. In this part of the cycle, the, energy converts, the engine converts heat energy into mechanical energy and does work. Transfer and cooling. The displacer piston moves to the left and the hot gas moves around it to the cooler part of the cylinder on the right. Both pistons now move to the right together, so the volume of the gas remains constant as it passes through the regenerator, or the heat exchanger, giving up some of its energy along the way. Cooling and compression. Now the gas arrives in the coldest part of the cylinder by the heat sink. Here it cools and contracts, giving up some of its heat, which is removed by the heat sink and both pistons move inward. Transfer and regeneration. The displacer piston moves to the right and the cool gas moves around it to the hotter part of the cylinder on the left. The volume of the gas remains constant as it passes back through the regenerator, or the heat exchanger, to pick up some of the heat it previously deposited. The gas is now back where it started and the process can then repeat. Although the engine goes through a reversible process, ended up ending up back where it started, it's not a symmetrical process. Energy is constantly removed from the source and deposited at the sink. That happens because the hot gas does a certain amount of work on the piston when it expands but the piston does less work compressing the cooled gas and returning it to the start. The biggest advantage of Stirling engines is that they're much more efficient than steam engines, largely because of the closed cycle and regenerative heat exchanger. They don't have boilers that can explode, don't need supplies of water, and don't have the complex system of opening and closing valves that steam engines require. There's one reason why they're much quieter than steam engines, and because they don't necessarily involve burning fuel, can be much cleaner. Unlike steam engines, which typically burn coal to boil water, Stirling engines can run from all different kinds of fuels. Stirling engines work best in machines that need to produce power continuously, using the difference between something hot and something cold. They're ideal for solar power plants, where the sun's heat plays on a mirror and acts as the heat source, and high-efficiency combined heat and power plants that need to produce steady supplies of electricity. On the downside, Stirling engines don't start instantly. It takes time for the all-important heat exchanger to warm up and the flywheel to run up to speed and they don't work so well in stop-start operation, unlike internal combustion engines. 
They also need large radiators that can expel waste heat, which makes them unsuitable for some applications. That's all we have for today. My name is Lee, and thanks for watching Next Generation Sustainable Living.